Hi everyone, I'm Naima. I've been living with long COVID for about 18 months now. I was probably in the first wave of people who got COVID in March 2020. It's already been one month since I said that I was going to try exercising for the first time since I got ill. It's definitely not exercising in the way that I was used to, but it has been a really interesting month testing out what works and what doesn't. This video will be in three parts. In the first part, I'll share where I was before I got sick when it came to exercise. In the second part, I'll share how long COVID has impacted my ability to move and exercise over the past year. And in the final part, I'll be sharing how my first month of exercise has gone overall. As I always say in these videos, I'm not a doctor and I can only speak from my own personal experience. If you have some doubts about whether you should be exercising again after getting long COVID or any other chronic condition, then please speak to your doctor. And it's gonna be a really long road to recovery, to getting back to movement again. And I'll be sharing everything in a monthly update as part of these long COVID diaries. So before we get into it, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you wanna learn with me and see how I slowly build Build up from zero to exercising again on a regular basis. I would say that before getting COVID, I had a really high cardiovascular fitness from a combination of weights, running, swimming, and spinning probably my whole life. And my average heart rate at rest would be about 50 to 55 beats per minute. And the average number of calories that I would burn is probably about 500 to 700 calories per day. And it was quite typical that I would work, walk about 30 minutes per day and that I would also do a 30 to 45 minute workout probably five times a week and exercise was a huge part of my life and over the last year things really really changed i've now been diagnosed with pots like symptoms this is a circulatory issue so for me the way it manifests is intense breathlessness every time i exert myself so going up the stairs walking around my heart races and then this creates chest pains which means that i can be bed bound for multiple days and before it was weeks at time and this would be just from a short walk and so this is what is causing the debilitating chest pain that many of us who have long COVID have. Obviously this is what is preventing us from exercising in the way that we used to. I've been monitoring my heart rate a lot more and I've started to notice some patterns and through that I've been trying to regain some control over the symptoms. One of the theories that I'm seeing quite a lot is that whenever your heart rate reaches over 120 beats per minute, even for a short time, this can lead to a deterioration of symptoms. I've been using an Apple Watch for a while now and there's a lot of data I can share around my heart rate and how it's fluctuated. I'm going to be looking back on data to show my heart rate and how that has changed over the last few months as I've got better. We're going to go back to March um, and this is probably where my symptoms were at their most severe so you can start to see some patterns. <laughs> So as you can see here, um, my heart rate was around on average 85 beats per minute and this would have been at rest because at this point I was completely bed bound and you can see at the top as well the peak of um, how high my heart rate was in comparison to the later months as I got better. And so let's zoom in on one of the days where it was particularly high. So if we go, this is this is the 6th of March on a Saturday. Um, and if we go and see that for 32% of the day, my heart rate was elevated. Um, and at the beginning, so over the during the night while I was asleep, it was over 70 beats per minute. And then as you scroll through to the middle of the day, this is when I was standing. So you see these sharp increases as I'm standing or walking all the way up to 157 beats per minute. And then as soon as I lie back down or sit back down, you can see it lower again. Um, so at this point, I would have been in a lot of pain. And now let's see over time how it's improved. So if we look forward now, um, and I started to see some improvements around June time. So already we can see that my heart rate, the average is going to, is still in the 80s and 90s. And 
then it's when in September that we start to see a decrease and we see a lot more times that my heart rate is at 70 beats per minute or even low 80s, which is a big improvement. And then in October, that's when I started taking beta blockers and immediately you can see that my heart rate is no longer in these, these red zones that you can see on, the, on this graph here. And by November, it's getting to high 60s. That is kind of the average. And so we can see already that by the first week of November the average was 65 on a lot of those days um, and here on the 9th of November you can see that even though I'm standing for a lot of the day um, it's still not getting too high um, and I still have these sharp increases now but it's only when I'm going up the stairs and I've had to start taking them a lot slower that is improving my condition <laughs> Now let's talk about how it went. So every week I did three exercises and I started out doing pelvic tilts. That was my first exercise. I also did side leg raises and then I went on to bridge. Um, and I started off doing only two minutes per day. Um, and this was from bed as well because I wanted to remove as much kind of friction between me doing those exercises as soon as I got up. On week two, I started off with foot pedals, so this is quite a gentle exercise and it didn't get my heart rate to race too much. I then moved on to heart raises and leg lifts as well, so I did um, leg lifts. Um, and the third week I moved on to knee openings and arm march, so this is where you're lifting one arm um, and then you're alternating with the other arm above your head and I also did dead bugs so these are all quite gentle exercises so that was week three and week four I went on to leg lifts so again similar exercise to the first week I also did thigh squeeze and I did clams as well and I found a great resource online that enabled me to find quite gentle exercises for people who have chronic conditions and I'll link that down in the bar below as well. At first my aim with the exercise was to increase every two weeks by 30 seconds. Then I learned that actually it wasn't necessarily about time, it was about how much, how my heart rate reacted to the exertion that I was doing. Uh, and that meant that every week I could add 30 seconds worth of exercise to the amount that I was doing, as long as my heart rate had not gone above 120 beats per minute. So that means the first week I started off, I was doing two minutes. The second week I also did two minutes as well. And then by the third week, I went up to two minutes 30. And that all went really smoothly until the fourth week. And then the fourth week I decided, right, this is going well, maybe I can, I can increase a bit quicker. So I went straight to three minutes and boom, midway through the exercise, my heart rate skyrocketed from 90 to 129. So clearly three minutes was my limit at that time where my symptoms would have deteriorated if I'd carried on exercising at that level. So I started again and then in the fourth week I ended up doing two minutes 30 again. And that means that hopefully this week I should be able to increase to three minutes. We'll see how that goes. My aim is that as long as my heart rate is under 120, I can increase by 30 seconds every week. So who knows, next time I'm speaking with you, I might be on five minutes, which would be wild, or four minutes 30, whatever it is, which would be wild compared to what I've been doing for the last year, which is basically just lying down all day. Once I can reach five minutes, I'm gonna move to standing. 30 seconds of standing exercise, so I'll add standing exercises to the five minutes. Whoa. Whoa, that is going to be a crazy, crazy time for me. Hold your horses, guys. So I've realised in this month that it's going to be quite a long road ahead. It's going to be a lot of stopping and starting and trying different things until something sticks. It's been really encouraging to see how many people have fully recovered and are going back to the same level of active activity as what they did before they got long COVID. If you're one of those people who has made a full recovery or who is exercising more than they ever could have thought possible, then please leave a comment below because I'd love to hear more about what has worked for you and it can give us a bit of hope for the future as well.
and that's it for now see you in my next video Thank <laughs> you.